Hello and welcome to episode 23 of Tech of the Month. If you want to catch up on the latest innovations in cycling, then well done you for watching this video. We all need to treat ourselves once in a while. Jack's here with Shimano's latest S5 road cycling shoes. Oscar with a cheeky little bump softening upgrade. Ash has a very new and shiny super fast gravel race bike from Factor. And finally, I have Wahoo's latest version of the Wahoo Roam their most powerful GPS computer yet. But first, if you're new to the channel or a regular, then don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon so you get notified every time we upload a new video. So I'm starting today's episode off with a big one, as I have with me a very new and shiny gravel race bike. It's Factor's brand new Ostro Gravel, which is designed for moving extra fast on the loose stuff. The Ostro Gravel carbon frame features aero optimizations aimed at making it competitive at the front of races like Unbound. It also squeezes in clearance for 45mm tyres to suit a fairly wide range of gravel riding. But Factor says it has crossover ability for use on the road, with an aggressive geometry said to reflect racing use. If you want to see our top bikes that tackled Unbound in 2022, there's a link in the description. Back to the bike though. Because while it's been given some sharp teeth to compete on the gravel racing scene, it does come prepared for the diverse rigours of gravel, with additional attachment points included for bags, boxes, tools and bottles. All complete build bikes come with hookless black ink 34 wheels, a black ink integrated cockpit, ceramic speed bearings in the bottom bracket and a ceramic speed headset. So far, so unashamedly factor. Available now, Prices start from £7,060 or $8,190 for a SRAM Force Explorer ETAP equipped bike with power meter. At the top end, for a SRAM Red ETAP build, you'll be expected to part with £9,380 or $10,899. The frame set costs £4,730 or $5,499, and if you want the black ink, wheels included, that's an additional £1,720 or $2,000. Let's go into a little more detail on the frame. It's made a blend of TechStream and Torre carbon, interwoven with Nippon graphite fibres, which together create what Factor calls a strengthened layup, ready for gravel racing. It has a 900 gram claimed painted weight and features broad aero tubing, not unlike that we've seen on the Ostro Vam all rounder road bike. There are broad truncated head tube and down tube profiles, which are claimed to be aerodynamically optimised for gravel riding speeds. In a given gravel race scenario, Average speeds are naturally lower than a typical road race, so ultimate wind cheating performance becomes less imperative. Instead, its tubes are noticeably squared off to promote aero stability in challenging conditions. The geometry is designed to offer a stable ride, yet bring sharp handling thanks to steep for gravel head tube angle at 72.3 degrees. As is de rigueur, the Ostro Gravel also sees internal cable routing, thanks to the new Black Ink HB02 carbon bar stem. There are a few ways to route cables or hoses, but this is how Factor has done it. The hydraulic brake hose passes through the handlebar and stem and down the front of the ceramic speed headset through a split ring. From there, the cables run down the down tube or the fork leg to the calipers. Aside from looking a bit pro, it's claimed to save up to 9 watts compared to a regular bar stem setup. Let me know how a 9 watt saving makes you feel in the comments. The bar stem can also accommodate a new GoPro style out front computer mount which has a secondary mounting point built in for a camera, so you can capture your gravel racing exploits. Handily, the fork uses a rounded 1 and 1 8 inch steerer, making a swap out to a third party cockpit easier, if you wanted to. Before I wrap up, let's check out Black Ink's 34 carbon wheel set. Designed for gravel use first and foremost, it's also well suited for road riding with tubeless tyres 30mm wide and above. The claim weight for the wheel set is 1,489 grams. Its hookless rims feature 25mm internal and 30mm external widths, are 34mm deep and are built around Black Ink's own hubs, complete with ceramic speed bearings. So, what do you think of Factor's new gravel offering? Does an all-out gravel race bike excite you? Or is your ultimate gravel bike a versatile do-it-all? Get typing down there in the comments. And now handing over to Oscar, who has a new Ergon Carbon seat post for you. Thanks Ash for that. Today I have something that will be familiar to many of you, the Ergon CF All-Road Pro Carbon Seat Post, which is now part of the brand's All-Road series of finishing kit for gravel riding. It'll be familiar to you because it's regularly found on Canyon bikes under its own branding as the popular VCLS Post. 
That stands for vertical comfort lateral stiffness. The seat post utilises a leaf spring suspension design that reduces road vibrations, therefore improving comfort over a traditional post. There is an extended range of saddle rail adjustment thanks to the reversible flip head. The two carbon fibre leaf springs compress and are attached together at the base of the post and the flip head. The post is available in 0 or 25mm setback options and only in a 27.2mm diameter and 345mm length. Ergon claims a 240 gram weight, but we weighed our setback variant in at 236 grams. Ergon claims a 100 kilogram weight limit, and the seat post can be used with both 7x7mm steel or titanium round saddle rails, or 7x9mm oval carbon saddle rails. However, if you're using a saddle with oval rails, you'll need to purchase Ergon's flip head adapter for carbon rails. The seat post retails for £229.99 or $249.95 and you can read our full review of the post on Bike Radar now. What do you think of this interesting seat post? Do you use a bump taming post to soften your ride? Let us know in the comments. Thank you very much for that Oscar. We're now going to go on to some tasty new kicks from Shimano. After a sneaky tease at Eurobike back in July and a season on the feet of the World Tour, Shimano's range-topping S-Fire RC903 shoes are finally hitting the shelves. Superseding the S-Fire RC902 model, the newest model has been redesigned with a revised retention system, highly vented toe box and no fewer than five colour options. There's also a woman-specific model on offer, the S-Fire RC903W, featuring a reduced volume and narrower fit which is claimed to suit the female rider. First seen sported by Matthew van der Poel back in February, the shoes have been tested and raced throughout the 2022 season by both him and other World Tour riders. A few changes in the boa dial and lace setup are said to improve the flexibility of the shoe's upper, reducing the chance of hotspots. A pair of Li2 boa dials are used to adjust the lace tension, which now runs in a figure of eight layout over the top of the shoe. These premium dials are also adjustable in both directions, so you can fine-tune your fit even on the fly, according to Shimano. Are you a Boa Dial fan, or do you prefer laces? Let us know in the comments. Further improving the fit of the shoe, according to Shimano, is the updated heel cup. Designed to be secure and stable, this anti-twist feature is said to lock in the heel to prevent movement during hard efforts and sprints. But before you put in your order, you should know that this is definitely a warm weather shoe. The lower reaches of the shoe's tongue have been replaced by a highly perforated mesh, presumably to further improve ventilation. The S-Fire RC903 is claimed to weigh in at 225 grams for a size 42, saving 10 grams on its predecessor. As I mentioned already, the shoes are available in five colorways. Riders opting for the unisex fit can choose between black, white, red, and the classic S-Fire Bright Blue. The woman's specific model features its own colourway, with a white base complemented by a pearly silver heel cup, more akin to the outgoing model design. Shimano usually offers a good range of sizing options, and the S-Fire RC903 is no exception. In the white, black, blue and red colourways, you can find sizes from 40 to 48, with half sizes available, reaching up to 46.5. There are also wide size fits on offer from size 40 to size 46. If you opt for the Women's S-Fire RC903 model, there are shoe sizes from 36 to 44 in full sizes only. As you might expect for a premium road shoe, these do not come cheap. Pricing is set at €359.95 or $450, and UK pricing is still yet to be confirmed. Now I've been riding with these shoes for a few weeks now and you can definitely see that, but you're going to have to wait until the full review is published on Bike Radar to hear my thoughts. What is your cycling shoe of choice? Let us know in the comments. And now we're going to hear from Felix about his brand new Wahoo Roam. Thanks for gracing us with your effervescence, Jack. But we all know why our beautiful YouTube audience is here, because today, Wahoo have released their latest Roam GPS computer. So at a glance, here are five updates to the new Roam. Number one, it has dual band GPS for more accurate navigation. 
Number two, it might look identical to the older version, but sharp eyes will notice the buttons are now convex. And hidden under the waterproof cover is a USB-C charging port. Number three, the internal memory has increased from four gigabytes to 32 gigabytes. Number four, and this is part of a series of new software updates, Wahoo have a new climbing feature called Summit Segment. Think of Garmin's Climb Pro or Hammerhead's Climber feature. And finally, number five, the screen is updated to a 64 color version, just like the Wahoo Bolt V2, with up to a massive eight different colors visible. It's worth noting that the battery life remains at a maximum of 17 hours, which is good to see despite the increased power demands of these new features. How much does it cost? Well, £349.99 or 399 US dollars and 99 cents, and that's the same in euros. As I mentioned, the new Roam now has dual band GPS technology, which has actually been around in smartphones for some time. The technology enables GPS receivers to track more than one signal from satellites of different frequencies. Consequently, this filters out inaccurate signals that are bouncing off objects in the surrounding environment and promises to be beneficial in woodland areas and also built environments as glass buildings can cause serious problems. So, as mentioned, the new model has a USB-C charging port. Is that a good thing? Or would you prefer to see the arguably more common micro USB? Let us know in the comments. So a bit more on the new software, continuing the brand's emphasis on connected ecosystem, Wahoo says riders can sync workouts on their Element Roam with their Wahoo X subscription. And you can use a GPS to control Wahoo Kicker smart trainers and the Wahoo Kicker bike. It's not available yet, but if you're into it, this might be exciting. It will soon have integration with the Super Sapiens glucose sensor system which essentially allows riders to consistently keep an eye on their glucose data mid-ride without the need for a phone. Another feature we can expect to see down the line, and this is great if you have riding friends with a Wahoo, is public route sharing. You'll be able to broadcast routes to other Wahoo users, saving that pre-ride fuddling with route apps and GPX files. Having used it for one ride with Jack the other weekend, I do like the feel of the new buttons. They feel a little bit more obvious to press when you're keeping an eye on the road. Unfortunately though, soon after we set off, the Wahoo actually crashed and I lost part of the ride and then the maps wouldn't load, so it wasn't actually that successful as a first ride. Maybe I just got unlucky and with some updates on the cards, I'd be interested to see how stable this is in the long run. I actually prefer the navigation of a Wahoo compared with the Garmin Edge 830, which I've been using the past few years. But let me know which GPS you prefer and keep your eyes peeled for a big old GPS group test video in the future. If you've watched this far, give yourself a pat on the back and make sure you subscribe with the bell icon activated so you don't miss out on our next episode, which incidentally will be a winter special. So please let us know what you'd like to see in that one in the comments. And if you'd like to catch up on all the other episodes of Tech of the Month, then hit this playlist here.